Hi everyone, welcome to EC Boats. Today we are going to study the next chapter that is our environment. This is the one and only one chapter from the unit environmental science. So let's get started with this chapter that is our environment. This is a very small chapter and it deals with the basic things related to environmental science and related to pollution. So first topic that we will be discussing in this chapter is related to the waste that we are generating and waste are of two types biodegradable waste as well as non biodegradable waste. Then we will be discussing about a little bit of ecosystem as well as the concept of food chain as well as food web. Also we will discuss a little bit of biological magnification which is also known as bio magnification. Moving forward we will also discuss about the important harmful effects of our environment like the ozone layer depletion, global warming and waste management. This are the topics which we are going to study in this chapter. So without any time delay let's get started with the first topic that is what is environment. So the term environment will be a very familiar term we are hearing it in various forms in newspapers as well as in television everywhere we are hearing about the need of conservation of our environment right so what exactly is this environment environment is the sum total of all the external factors substances living beings and conditions that surround an organism and influence the same without being its part that means the complete thing the complete biotic as well as abiotic substances which are present around us comprises of what is called as the environment so in the environment we can see the biotic components which is the living components as well as we can also see the non-living components that is known as the abiotic components so first let us see the classification of waste waste materials that are produced by human beings are characterized into two categories the first one is known as the biodegradable waste and the second is known as the non biodegradable waste so what is the meaning of biodegradable degradable means breaking down biodegradable means breaking down of waste by the action of some biological organisms now what are the biological organisms that is helping in the process of breakdown of these waste it is nothing but bacteria as well as fungi these organisms can break down some of the waste products into simpler products so if the waste is getting converted into simple products by the action of bacteria or fungi then we can say that that is a biodegradable waste so let us read the definition here the waste materials which can be broken down into non poisonous substances in nature due course of time by the action of microorganisms like certain bacteria are called as biodegradable waste so now what are the examples for biodegradable waste the first one is the vegetable peel that we use every day right we generate a large number of vegetable peel every day after cooking so that vegetable peel can be degraded by bacteria so that is an example for biodegradable waste another example that we can say is the animal bone and the animal flesh another example is the leather and so on however there are some substances some waste products which cannot be broken down into non poisonous or harmless substances in nature those wastes are known as non biodegradable waste and examples for such wastes are plastic glass etc so these are some of the examples of non biodegradable waste so this was the first topic in this chapter that is classification of waste into biodegradable and non biodegradable waste so you can carry out an activity related to this by checking what are the biodegradable waste and non biodegradable waste that is generated from your home every day let us now study the basic concepts of ecosystem so what is ecosystem ecosystem is a self contained unit of living things their non living environment the combination of the living things along with its non living environment is known as an ecosystem the living things is known as the biotic elements of the ecosystem and the non living things are known as the abiotic elements of the ecosystem so the biotic elements includes plants animals decomposers bacteria etc 
and the non-living environment that is the abiotic substances include soil air water and so on so let us see the examples of ecosystem one such ecosystem is the terrestrial ecosystem that is the land ecosystem and in the land ecosystem we can see different types of uh, different examples of land ecosystem like the forest a farmland a green land all these can be considered as examples for terrestrial ecosystem we also have aquatic ecosystem like the river pond lake and so on a pond itself is acting as an ecosystem because there are abiotic components like rock water sand silt clay etc and also there are living organisms like plants fishes large fishes etc right so that single pond can act as an ecosystem as well so it's a self sustained or self contained unit where living organisms cooperate with the non living organisms that is the meaning of an ecosystem so now let us study what are the components of an ecosystem basically we have two components first one is known as the biotic component and the second is known as the abiotic component so first let us see about biotic component biotic component of an ecosystem is a community of living organisms so bio means life so biotic components means all the living components in an ecosystem is known as the biotic components so what are the various biotic components first one is the producer second is the consumer and the third is the decomposer now what are these things producer consumer and decomposer so let us learn each of these in detail first one the biotic component which can produce its own food by the process of photosynthesis is known as a producer so we can characterize some bacteria certain blue green algae certain fungi and all the green plants under producers because they can produce their own food because they can carry out the process of photosynthesis coming to the second category that is about consumer consumer means those organisms which depend on plants or other animals for their food that means the herbivores carnivores omnivores all these are coming under the category of consumers talking about the third category that is known as decomposer which is also known as the saprophyte so what is decomposer or saprophyte decomposer means which decompose the remains of other organisms the organisms which can decompose the remains of other dead and decaying organisms is known as decomposer which is also known as the saprophyte examples for saprophyte includes bacteria as well as fungi now what are omnivores omnivores means those organisms which can eat both plants as well as animals example humans bears are examples for omnivores now in the lake we can see certain organisms which are floating on the surface of water these floating structures which can be seen floating on the water can either be a plant or it can be an animal those floating planktonic substances planktonic substances means those which are floating in the same direction of the river flow they can be plants or they can be animals if they are plants then they are known as phytoplanktons because phyto means plant so phytoplanktons are the small sized plants which are floating on the surface of water whereas there are small sized organisms or small sized animals which are floating on the surface of water these small sized organisms are known as zooplanktons so the two types of planktonic species are phytoplanktons as well as zooplanktons they are microscopic or very minute organisms which freely float on the surface of a river lake or an ocean so now let us talk about the abiotic component in our eco ecosystem so the abiotic component of our ecosystem includes the physical environment such as the soil water air and the non living components of the environment like the elements hydrogen sodium nitrogen and so on so all these are comprising of the abiotic component so so far we have seen what is an ecosystem and what are the two components of ecosystem first one was the biotic component that is the living component of the ecosystem and second is the abiotic component which is the non living component of the ecosystem now let us talk about the concept of food chains and food webs this is the most important 
topic of this chapter. So let's get started with this topic. We all know that we eat food so as to get energy. So imagine a plant. This plant can be consumed by a herbivore. Now this herbivore is eaten up by a carnivore. So now what happens is that the energy which was trapped inside the plant is getting transferred from the plant that is the autotroph to the next organism which is a herbivore. Now when a carnivore is consuming this herbivore what happens is that the energy which was trapped in the herbivore is now getting transferred into the carnivore. So the energy is flowing in a sequential fashion from the plant it is moving to the herbivore and from there it is moving to the carnivore. So this sequential event or this sequence in which the energy is getting transferred is known as the food chain. So defining food chain, the sequence of living organisms in a community in which one organism consumes another organism to transfer food energy is called as a food chain. Food chain always and always starts from producers producers or the green plants and all the food chain starts from the original source of all food that is the green plant next in the chain is always the plant eater which is the herbivore which is called as the primary consumer because the first person who is going to consume the producer is known as the primary consumer so who is going to be consuming the plant first it is the herbivore so that is why the second category that is a primary consumer is mostly herbivore. I use the word mostly because even omnivores can eat plants, right? We can also eat plants. So we are not herbivores, we are omnivores. So in the category of primary consumer, either there can be a herbivore or it can be an omnivore, but it can never be a carnivore. A tiger cannot eat grass directly, right? So now what is happening, the organisms that are eating, these primary consumers are known as the secondary consumers. Now the organisms who are eating the secondary consumers are called as tertiary consumers. Sometimes there can be a quaternary consumer and so on. However, the number of organisms in a food chain is limited to maximum four or five because the energy that is getting transferred from one organism to another is reducing by 10 percentage every time. So that is the reason why there is a limitation of the number of organisms in a particular food chain. So let us now talk about an example for food chain. We have three examples over here. So look at the first one that is the case A. We have some green plants that is eaten up by a deer and now that deer is eaten up by a tiger. So there are three organisms which is coming in that particular food chain. Here the plants is acting as the producer. This is the primary consumer and this is the secondary consumer. So the carnivore is acting as the secondary consumer. Talking about the second food chain. In the second food chain we can see five organisms. Plants is acting as the producers. Next we have a grasshopper that is the secondary uh, level. At the secondary level we can see a grasshopper that is acting as the primary consumer. Frog is acting as the secondary consumer. Snake which is eating the frog is acting as the tertiary consumer. And the hawk or the eagle which is eating the snake is known as the quaternary consumer. So total five tropic levels are present in this particular food chain. Now let us take the example of C. Here also we have plants which is eaten up by a scorpion. Now that scorpion is eaten up by a fish. That fish is eaten up by a crane. So how many trophic levels are here? Four trophic levels are here. So what are trophic levels? Trophic levels are individual levels of food chain. So this is the producer, this is the primary consumer, this is the secondary consumer and this is the tertiary consumer. And if I talk about trophic levels, this is the first trophic level, primary consumer is the second trophic level, secondary consumer is the third trophic level and tertiary consumer is the fourth trophic level. So here this eagle is going to be in the fifth trophic level. So now let us define trophic level. So before that let us see the diagram showing the flow of energy in an ecosystem. How is energy going to flow? Energy always flows in one direction only. How is it happening? Let's see. We know that the ultimate source of energy for all living organisms on earth is the sunlight. So from the sunlight the energy is now going to move into the producers. From the producers the energy is going to move into herbivores. 
from herbivores it is now going to move into carnivores and from carnivores it is now going to move into the top carnivores so this is the only direction in which energy can flow it can never flow in the backward direction that is why we can say that a food chain is always unidirectional that means the transfer of energy can take place only in one direction that is from the producers to the top carnivores so now let us take the example of an aquatic ecosystem so in an aquatic ecosystem first it is starting with an algae which is also known as the phytoplankton which i already told which is floating on the surface of water now this phytoplankton is eaten or consumed by small animals which are floating on the surface of water which is known as zooplankton and these small animals called as zooplankton are consumed by small fishes small fishes can then be consumed by a big fish and this big fish can again consumed by a crane so this is a aquatic ecosystem the food chain that is represented in an aquatic ecosystem so the various steps in a food chain at which the transfer of food or energy takes place is called as the trophic level so each and every individual level in a food chain is known as the trophic level so that's a very basic concept that is trophic level and the definition of trophic level can directly be asked in the examination so whenever such questions comes related to definition of trophic level you can take any of the food chain and explain what are the different trophic levels in that particular food chain so now let us move on to one diagram which is showing the various trophic level the basic trophic level is that of producers then comes the primary consumer then comes the secondary consumer and then comes the tertiary consumer so this is the first trophic level primary consumer represents the second trophic level secondary consumers is the third trophic level and tertiary consumers is the fourth trophic level so when green plants are actually eaten by the primary consumers large number of energy is lost into the environment so i'm going to teach you a law which is known as lindelmann's 10 percentage law of thermodynamics what is this lindelmann's 10 percentage law of thermodynamics it just states that when energy is transferred from one trophic level to the next trophic level 90 percentage of this energy is lost in the form of heat 90 percentage of the energy that is present in one trophic level is lost in the form of heat and only 10 percentage is transferred from one trophic level to the next trophic level that means if there is 10,000 joules which is present at the first trophic level then only 10 percentage of that 10,000 joule will be there in the second trophic level that is 1000 joule in the next organism it will be just 10 percentage of that thousand that is 100 joule in the next trophic level it will be 10 percentage of that thousand that is 100 in the next trophic level it will be 10 percentage of that hundred that is 10 trophic 10 joule so that means the amount of energy which is present at each trophic level keeps on decreasing that is why the number of organisms or number of trophic levels cannot exceed more than five because at the fifth trophic level very little energy is left in the organism so that is why it is restricted to five so let us see what is mentioned in ncrt regarding this lindelmann's 10 percentage law of thermodynamics when green plants is eaten up by the primary consumers a great deal of energy is lost as heat to the environment some amount goes into digestion and doing work and rest goes through growth and reproduction an average of 10 percentage of the food eaten is turned into its own body and is made available to the next level of consumers the length and complexity of food chain vary greatly each organism is generally eaten by two or more kinds of organisms that is an important point a frog can be eaten by a snake sometimes it can be eaten by some birds as well right so that means this frog can be a part of one ecosystem one food chain as well as another food chain similarly one insect can be eaten up by a frog and the same insect can be eaten up by a bird also like a sparrow right so in some cases sparrow can act as a herbivore and some cases it can act as a carnivore so one organism can have more than one positions in a particular food chain so that is why there should be an interrelationship between multiple food chains this interrelationship between multiple food chains is known as a food web
Each organism is generally eaten up by two or more kinds of organisms, which in turn are eaten by several other organisms. So instead of a single straight line food chain, the relationship can be shown as a series of branching lines. And this series of branching lines is known as a food web. Now coming to the 10% law. 10% law states that only 10% of the energy entering a particular trophic level of organisms is available for transfer to the next higher trophic level. So this is known as Lindelman's 10% law of thermodynamics. Now we are going to study about the concept of biological magnification and what is its significance so what is biological magnification so let us take a scenario to understand this better we know that by the awake of green revolution in the 19th century the crop yield in the country have been increased tremendously but we know that there are large number of harmful effects of this green revolution on the life of many organisms what is that harmful effect in green revolution we are giving more emphasis on fertilizers and chemicals like the ddt right so what happens is that the concentration of a particular chemical increases as we move from one trophic level to the next trophic level this increase in the concentration of the toxicant or the toxic substance from one trophic level to the next trophic level is known as a biological magnification so what is biological magnification it refers to the increase in concentration of the toxicant at successive trophic levels so what or how exactly is this happening what is the reason for biological magnification biological magnification happens because the toxic substance does not get metabolized in the body and also does not get excreted out from the body it remains as such in the body and as a result of which when another organism is consuming this organism the complete toxicant is going to the next trophic level and there it is again not going to be excreted so the amount of concentration is going to increase at each and every trophic level and this phenomenon is known as biological magnification this is a very very important topic questions can come based on this this is mainly shown by many chemicals such as mercury and DDT now here we can see an example the water which is released from a farmland that will be having very little amount of DDT say 0 0.003 parts per billion now what happens it is consumed by a zooplankton and in the zooplankton the concentration of DDT is increased to 0 0.04 ppm that is parts per million now this zooplankton is consumed by a small fish the concentration of DDT again increases to 0 0.5 parts per million the small fish is now consumed by a large fish so its concentration increases to 2 ppm when birds are consuming its concentration is increased tremendously because the toxicant is going to be at its peak when it reaches higher organisms so now the birds is going to have a concentration of 25 ppm so in the birds what happens the calcium metabolism is going to be affected as a result of which its eggshells starts thinning so there will be premature breaking of this eggshell and that causes a severe decline in the bird population so biological magnification at the lower levels is not much significant but when it comes to the higher level what happens it can have drastic effect on a complete population so this is a serious concern for the present day chemists and biologists let us now talk about the various environmental problems that is existing in the present day society first one that we are going to discuss is global warming so what exactly is global warming global warming is the process of heating up of the earth so let us discuss about global warming we know that there are large number of greenhouse gases which is present on earth such as carbon dioxide and some oxides of nitrogen methane etc these gases are extremely important for keeping the temperatures temperature of the earth a constant one otherwise the temperature of earth will be dropping down to the sub-zero levels so to prevent that there is some greenhouse gases which is present at the boundary of the earth's surface or in the boundary of the atmosphere so as to provide warmth to the surface of the planet but what happens is that when there is excessive burning of automobile fuels and also due to extensive cutting of the trees 
the concentration of carbon dioxide in our atmosphere or in our planet gradually increases this increase in concentration of carbon dioxide traps more sunlight in the surface of earth and the peculiarity of these greenhouse gases is that once these radiations once these solar radiation enters the earth's surface it does not move out so that is acting as a blanket right it is acting as a blanket so that once the radiation gets in it does not move out so the extensive or the increased amount of these radiations heat up the earth this phenomenon is known as global warming global warming is mainly due to extensive use of automobile fuels and cutting down of the forest that is known as deforestation now what is its severe impact the impact is that all the harmful radiations are going to enter into the earth's surface causing skin cancer then damages to the cornea and so on another environmental uh, degradation that it is going to create is the melting of the polar ice caps melting of the polar ice caps is really significant for rise in the level of ocean waters so this can take up a large portion of land in future so the land in which we are living can be oceans in the future because of this serious concern called global warming now let us discuss another important concern that is ozone layer depletion what is ozone ozone is a gas which is formed by the combination of dioxygen with another molecule sorry another atom of oxygen this is a poisonous gas however in the level of stratosphere it is useful there are different layers of atmosphere like the troposphere stratosphere mesosphere ionosphere etc so in the troposphere this ozone is a harmful gas but at the stratosphere level it is a useful gas why is it useful it prevents the entry of harmful solar radiations into the surface of earth but what happens is that certain substances called as the chlorofluorocarbons which is mainly released from the aerosols from the refrigerators as well as the air conditioners these substances are going to release free chlorine radicals free chlorine radicals and these chlorine radicals are responsible for the splitting of these ozone molecules these chlorine molecules will split the ozone molecules to form oxygen and oxygen free radical now you may be thinking that the amount of oxygen now increases we get more oxygen to breathe right but more than that this oxygen is available at the stratosphere level it can never come down to the earth for our breathing purpose it is going to stay over there the layer of ozone starts depleting so when the layer of ozone starts depleting what happens is that more and more solar radiations can now enter easily because there is no protection so this can have severe impact on our skin causing skin cancer it can also affect our cornea of the eyes causing blindness and various types of uvb radiations which is entering into the surface of earth causes mutations leading to different kinds of cancers and different kinds of modifications in the future generations so this is another harmful impact of our environment which we have to pay really attention to different conventions have taken different steps so as to prevent ozone layer depletion in the year of 1987 unep have made an argument to freeze the amount of cfc that is produced another argument which was uh, signed was known as the montreal protocol and this montreal protocol have signed by many nations to ensure that the amount of car chlorofluorocarbons that is released into the atmosphere is reduced drastically so as to conserve our earth from uh, from this ozone depletion so this ozone depletion is another very serious concern which should be addressed so that our future generation is saved because majority of the land areas is going to be con converted into water at the same time what can happen it can also leads to various types of cancers including skin cancers now the next important thing is known as waste management improper waste management so accumulation of waste can have serious impact it can lead to leaking of very harmful chemicals like the pesticides etc 
and this is going to enter into each of the trophic levels in the food chain and that can cause biological magnification which we have already studied so how can we do this waste management properly there are different steps in it step number one is recycling of the non biodegradable waste for biodegradable waste we can use compost incineration can be done for hospital waste that is uh, burning these hospital waste separately in large containers that is known as incineration landfills that means large pits are taken and in which all these wastes are dumped and once it gets filled it is covered and it is later converted into parks or uh, recreation grounds next one is the sea waste treatment plant which is used for conservation of water and cleaning of water bodies so these are the various steps in which waste can be managed properly and as a result of which we can save biological magnification we can uh, treat the process of biological magnification in a much better way and it can release the amount of toxicants in different organisms so this completes our chapter that is our environment it was a very small chapter which dealt with just three topics first one was the classification of waste second was about the food chain and the food web and the third one was regarding the major environmental concerns so i hope you have understood the topics of this chapter please check the description box below for the link of my telegram channel you can communicate with me directly through that and also you can get the pdf of the handwritten notes of this chapter from the description box also if you like this video please do like as well as share it with your friends so that they can also see this and learn the concepts better and also do not hesitate to ask your queries doubts and suggestions in the comment section below so see you again in the next lecture in the next lecture we are going to take physics the chapter is electricity so see you again in the next class and happy learning